I would appreciate it if you could please go over and click on the subscribe and uh, hit the notification so you can know next time we have something new coming on. And uh, sorry for the uh, interruption, but back to the show. Quartier at Hoshalaga. The voyages of Jacques Cartier were the real basis of the French claims in, to Canada. In 1534, he sent out to find the passage to China that had invaded so many others. That year and the next explored the St. Lawrence as far as Montreal, where he visited the Indian village of Hochelaga. Aside from one abortive effort at Quebec in 1541, no serious effort to colonize was made until the coming of Champlain. Jellyfish Armada. Hello, and hopefully, welcome back to Damn Weird. Now, now, maybe I should restate what Damn Weird is. It's not always cryptids, it's not always paranormal. It is the weird. Sometimes the definition of weird, as in the old mystical means, sometimes in just the strange and outcast. Wait, I like this character because it, it allows me to check out various things. Now, let's begin. Yes, I realize that everyone knows jellyfish exist. But what is weird is the increase in the whole armadas of various types of jellyfish are appearing around the globe. The experts are still researching into the reasons why. To me, it seems to be a direct reaction to the global environmental changes. Now that is a large category of things from pollution, to global warming, which is also related. It, it's all a very closely tied system. That's why it's called an ecosystem. A boat was capsized off Chiba in Japan, and its three-man crew was trying to haul in a net containing dozens of huge Namura jellyfish. Four years after their last they reared their slimy heads, and for reasons that remain mysterious, an armada of the gelatinous giants has gathered in the Yellow Sea off China and the Korean Peninsula. It later drifted into the Sea of Japan and brought down the Daisen Shinshimura, one of the largest jellyfish in the world. The Namura jellyfish can grow up to six feet in diameter and weigh as much as 400 pounds. The three men were rescued by another trawler the local Coast Guard office reported that the weather was clear and the sea was calm at the time of the accident, which is unusual for jellyfish. Um, jellyfish can actually be torn up by two 
vicious of water, of weather. Things are pushing around in it. They're a powerful yet fragile creature. Once again, like our planet, powerful yet fragile, at least our ability to survive on it. The arrival is inevitable. Professor Shinichi Wu at Hiroshima University. I'm sure I butchered his name. He told the Yamura newspaper a huge jellyfish typhoon would hit the country. In 2005, fishermen looking for anchovies, salmon, and yellowtails began finding huge numbers of the jellyfish in their nets. When the Nomuras grew larger than a meter in diameter, half a dozen of them can destroy a fishing net. The fish caught alongside them are poisoned and covered in slime and rendered unsellable. So serious was the situation that salmon boats in northern Japan stopped going out. And in some places, fishermen lost 80% of their income. Even staff at some of the nuclear plants along the Japan Sea found that the jellyfish got sucked into the pumps, which take in seawater to cool the reactors. I've always had a... I've looked at jellyfish myself. And to me, when they're floating in the ocean, you see the pictures, they seem as if they're like white blood cells in the body or virus. They're floating cells in the bloodstream of the earth. Possibly these are actions it's taking to defend itself. Too much fishing? Send him some jellyfish. I don't think it's that simple. It's not a thought process. But. No one is sure about the reasons why this slimy plague occurred. One theory is that climate change is heating up the seawater and encouraging them to breed. Another blames the effluent from rivers in China, which carries nutrients on which the jellyfish live. Another blames overfishing of other species, leaving a soufflet of plankton for these to feed on. When scuba diver Will Hood zipped up his wetsuit and secured his mask for a dive off the coast of Cornwall, he was perhaps hoping to see crabs scuttling on the seabed. What the six foot three inch teenager did not expect to find himself overshadowed by a vast white barrel jellyfish with a violet fringe and a lace-like trailing tendrils. In May, wildlife photographer Steve Trowella found a rubbery mound on a gravel beach in Portland, Dorset, while out for a walk. It became clear that the glistening gelatinous mass, which measured about 20 inches across, was an extremely large barrel jellyfish, one of the largest species to be found in the British waters. Also known as dustpan lid jellyfish due to their size, these creatures can reach up to 35 inches in diameter and weigh up to six pounds. Rarely do they stray close to land though. However, Mr. Trowella said he has now counted five of these bizarre creatures, which are distinguished by their large size and thick rubbery skin upon Portland's beaches. So what has caused this astonishing rise in the numbers of barrel jellyfish to British waters? And have we anything to fear from this eerie underwater invasion? Wildlife experts believe that they have been brought close to shore by a combination of strong winds and rising seawater and temperatures. When the creatures appear in very large numbers, it is known as a jellyfish bloom. This occurs when a strong ocean current forces large numbers of them into swarms, carrying them in the same direction. These blooms can include hundreds or even thousands of jellyfish. Because they don't have a central nervous system, jellyfish have limited control over their movements, meaning they are carried from place to place and even stranded on beaches by the movement of the currents. Scientists believe blooms, like the ones off the Cornish coast, are becoming much more common. Though there are few records of past jellyfish populations, recent surveys suggest their numbers are increasing dramatically. One theory is to explain this is that overfishing has reduced the number of sea creatures, such as sardines, anchovies, competing for the same foods, especially the plankton. It is also meant that there are fewer fish, such as herring, in the ocean, which feed on jellyfish eggs 
before they mature. So tenacious are the jellyfish that some experts warn of an apocalyptical future when they will dominate the seas completely. Be walking on the back of jellyfish to cross the ocean. <laughs> Within 40 or 50 years, British marine biologist Professor Callum Roberts has theorized other species will have died out in the oceans and will be home only to slimy algae and jellyfish. Certainly, there seem to be a lot more of them around Britain's coastline than before. Susan Sheldon, 48, stumbled upon a three-foot barrel jellyfish when she was walking her dog on a beach in Dorset in May. Earlier that month, more than 50 barrel jellyfish washed up on the beach in Meanporth, Cornwall and a further 12 were glimpsed in Weymouth Harbor, Dorset. In December, it was claimed that jellyfish sightings in Ireland had reached the highest level in 25 years. While last August, several red and orange lion mane jellyfish were spotted off the west coast of Scotland. With tentacles more than 100 feet long, they are sea monsters. The largest on record spotted in 1870s had 120 foot tentacles and diameter of seven feet. Their sting can cause severe blisters and muscle cramps and can be deadly to those with heart problems. This time last year, swimmers were warned to keep their wits about them. After several Portuguese man of war, jellyfish were sighted in Cornwall. They deliver a severe sting by affixing their tentacles to human skin. Even after their sting has been pulled off the flesh, still more venom can be released into the skin if, if it's rubbed and it's causing large red welts, nausea, convulsions, and even in rare occasions, death. In 2012, Roland Singe, a 58-year-old grandfather, died after suffering severe anaphylactic shock when he was stung by a Portuguese man-of-war near Cape Town. In the Philippines, up to 40 people die each year from jellyfish stings. Among most venomous are the Pacific-dwelling box jellyfish, who have 24 eyes and grow 10 feet. Several Portuguese man-of-war jellyfish were spotted in the waters of Cornwall last year. Their tentacles can affix to human skin, delivering severe stings. The minuscule Irokanji jellyfish, on the other hand, rarely grows to a width of more than 25 millimeters, but can still cause instant death by anaphylaxis, a severe constriction of the airways. Given the deadly powers, it is little wonder that jellyfish inspire such fear and fascination, and few creatures boast such a colorful history. They have been drifting around the oceans largely untouched by evolution for more than five million years. That tends to be that they've reached the height of their evolution. They have no way, they've, they're doing their jobs, more so than a lot of the other species on the planet, <sighs> humans. The name, which came into use in the 18th century, is deceptive. Jellyfish aren't really fish. They're not really jelly either. Not like on your toast. They have no vertebrae and no specialized digestive, respiratory, or central nervous system. Instead, they absorb oxygen through an extremely thin skin. Nutrients are taken in through a stalk-like tube hanging down from the underside of the body, which has a mouth at the tip. Typically, they feed on plankton, crustaceans, and fish eggs. Though some species, such as lion's mane, are cannibals, feasting on other jellyfish. They are really quite remarkable, says Dr. Peter Richardson, director of the Marine Conservatory Society Biodiversity Program. They are such a simple creature, and that's one reason they are so successful. And unlike other creatures, jellyfish do quite well in water where oxygen levels are low, so they thrive even in severe pollution. While other sea creatures have faded into extinction, jellyfish have thrived. And there are more than 3,000 species ranging in size, from one millimeter to just under seven feet. So maybe it's not that we're noticing an increased number of jellyfish. But in a way, we're experiencing the fact that we've fished so much that there are less fish, and by default, more jellyfish. And then we've already discussed the other effects on the economy, on the system that has. A horde forced the shutdown of a nuclear power plant in Sweden after they clogged the cooling system, while fishing boats in Japan have been capsized 
by refrigerator-sized jellyfish cotton nets. If the jellyfish bloom continues, coastal areas may find themselves forced to take extreme measures to repel their gelatinous visitors. With this fear in mind, scientists in Korea have developed so-called jellyfish terminator robots that can patrol the coastline. The machines float along the surface of the water and use onboard cameras to detect jellyfish. They then suck them up in nets and shred them into pieces. Thankfully, Dr. Richards says there's no need for such drastic responses though, not along the coast of Britain. But despite the barrel jelly's harmless nature, he recommends keeping the distance if you see one. Unless you're very sure of its identification, it could be a more harmful species. For those who do get stung by the jellyfish, treatments vary according to the nature of the sting of which type of jellyfish is responsible. The most important thing to remember is that when you are stung, the jellyfish usually leaves its tentacles on you. So you should wash the wound and add ice, but don't rub it. A lot of the poisons are activated and get worsened by that action. Taking antihistamines, scraping the skin with a not too sharp knife edge, and applying ice water on the injured area are just three methods used to soothe injuries. There's no miracle cure for jellyfish sting. Urinating on the wound does not help, although it is widely believed that it does. If you are stung by a box jellyfish overseas or a lion's mane near Britain, you must seek medical attention. While jellyfish blooms might be bad news for swimmers, there are some people who are celebrating. Well, only I'd say is, in conclusion on this one, I'd like to state that, as I mentioned earlier, to me the jellyfish seems almost like a white blood cell of the ocean. Cleans up, floats around where it's needed. Doesn't really have a mind of its own. Just does its job and the ocean shoves it around. Or we do. But in the end, if the ocean goes down too low, jellyfish will become more numerable. And then after a while, the fish will come back and then you'll have a lot of jellyfish to eat. You know, it's that circle. It goes round and round. The only question is, on the next circle, will the humans be part of the ride or not? Thank you. enjoyed some of our work that you've seen here please do me a favor and click there over on patreon corner and you can see you can become a patron and for like a dollar a month you can uh, give me input on anything that you think would be good to continue on so we do so much different things and it's hard to see what people want to see next so become a contributor and as well as have an opinion on what we do next. Second day of play on comic book game. Chair creaky sound, creaky sound. What we're picking up today is okay, we pick up at the intersection that happens to be between an old churchyard, because he he's over there, as in Chase is gonna meet Linda there. 
and start a discussion on what she saw out behind the labs. I will need... Is there any specific skill you're using for this uh, interrogation or interview? Yeah, we'll call it an interview instead. Yeah, just... Interesting. I, I'd probably be using my in, intuition and my psyche. Okay, let's well, just roll off your intuition then. What's your intuition? Good. Okay. A 10. 87. Go ahead and roll. I did 87. Okay. We gotta find the two hit charts. Oh, I didn't have it. <laughs> okay, now what was the stat? Intuition, what'd you have? Intuition, good. And what'd you roll? 87. Oh, that's a yellow. So we'll say uh, two, two successes. Okay, I'll tell you is in the description what she saw. Um, she can't seem to specify if it was more of a lizard man or more of a Bigfoot. That's just what she's going with. But in actuality, her description might as well be a shadow person. What she saw, like, almost seemed to like not match shapes that she says. So you're not sure what she saw. But she saw something and she seems to be responding as if she's seen something. You're just unsure of what it was she saw. She found something. And it was she... bigger than man size. So she's basically not knowing what she saw. Yeah. Now, while you're thinking up some uh, questions you may have specifically for her, I'll give you two. And then, you can start coming out. You'll come out during this discussion, walking across the parking lot. Your car is parked like across, right there at the edge. So it's like there's your car, the sidewalk, a road, a sidewalk, them. They're like the bus stop across the street. I yell over at him, so she feeding you lies? No. What were your questions or things you wanted to ask her more specifically? Uh, why was she in the bat in that area is number one. Why was she out there? Can I butt in on this conversation? You will after the two questions. And she was back there to meet a friend who also works at this place. Okay. It was just the closest place they could meet. And she didn't know it was like off limits, but Okay. Yeah, that's what happened. And who is that? <laughs> Did they see the same thing? <clears throat> Um, I don't think I can answer that without getting someone in trouble. <laughs> okay, you can come out now and say something to them about this whole thing. Okay. First off, to answer your first question, she was back there to be get into the bone zone with the congressman's son. You know him. His name is Troy. Troy, huh? She only she was only back there to get the bone zone on with Troy. You also know Troy has a girlfriend, and it's not Linda. Or 
average as a girlfriend. So he's playing both sides of the coin. No, he's, he's well, same side, coin twice. He has a girlfriend. It's Sylvia Shasta. My boss's sister. Yeah. Linda is apparently saying that he's cheating with her. All that is not really in of my business onto it. Well, see, this is why I call bullshit on her saying that Sasquatch or Lizard Man or whatever she said she saw. Because I bet you anything she was down on her knees facing the wall into his crotch. But if I didn't see anything, why would I bring all this attention to myself? Your imagination it? and your attention whore. Well, that, if this all that, just didn't come to this, that, I guess that, you already got that, me fired that, that, today. That, that, that. I smell poop. <laughs> Roll up, change this. Forty. She decides to head over to her car, which is on and the stereo's playing, so you guys can like hear music playing in the background while you guys are. Who's in the car? No one. Look. I just wanted to listen to music. What imagining joy. I don't have to imagine it. Man stealer. I'm not taking him. Yeah, you are. You're sleeping with your ex boss's boy sister's boyfriend. I'm pretty sure I've probably done it was something that kind of an extreme line of people. I've probably done this before. Start, start calling you town bicycle. Everybody gets a ride. Oh! Well, Josh, you might go for you too. I'm stepping away from you this you, argument. You might want to get checked for the clap. Okay. <laughs> Looks like Linda's gonna leave. Do you want to stop her? Get all the information I needed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm done with her. <laughs> I got more information than I needed. <laughs> okay. As she gets over to her car, she gets in. Right before she gets in, she gets shocked by the door. What'd you do? Freaking hell. Nothing. And she goes like this, and the door opens. Ooh. But then the stereo the music stops. An announcement comes across the news. The circus will apparently be having a special exhibit at their winter camp site. Um, they're not doing a normal show. There won't be the rings or anything like that. More of an exhibition show. But apparently they brag they right now just found the world's largest crab. Mm. 